off the bat, if you haven't downloaded Blender 2.8, I would suggest you download it now. I'll put a link below. Just click on that link, download it. Now, when you open up the program, what you're going to be greeted with is this box. The first thing you want to do is delete this box. Just press delete and it's deleted. The next thing you want to do is you want to go to this icon here, click on it, and then just click on 2D animation. Right, the next thing you want to do is above your tab key, you press that key there, and then you get a wheel that will come up, yeah? Click on front, and then what you're faced with is a, a target a grid, and a, a grid system behind it. Now, this is your front-facing view. Um, what you want to do then is add a grease pencil object. So if you've got add, grease pencil blank. So you can't really draw until you've got a grease pencil object in your scene. So then you could go to object mode, draw. And now, if I was to draw, I can draw, yeah? Okay. Now this is your canvas view. Now you can move this canvas view by using this grabbing tool here. You can zoom in and out by using the middle mouse button. Yeah. You can also, um, if you open overlays, you can get rid of your grids and you can also get rid of some of your extras. For example, um, your camera views and your lights. So now you've got a black blank view to deal with. You can turn them back on if you want them. But because we're just drawing from the front, uh, we don't need to do that. The other thing you want to do is turn on um, your front XZ, and that locks your view to the front XZ plane. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through um, layers, because I think layers is an important part. Now, if you are familiar with layers, then you've got to forgive me, but this is more for the, the, the new guys. Now, layers, if you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop, etc., is it's like drawing on glass. I mean, if you're not familiar with layers, basically, it's like drawing on glass. You can just stack a bit of glass and then you draw on it and stack another bit of glass and draw on it. Now, this is it. You see these icons along here? This one here would allow you to get into your layers property. So just click new layer, and then you've got a layer here. Now if I was to draw on this layer, I can then, um, and then I'll add another layer. I can hide the layer below by just clicking on, on this icon here. You see, I can also lock it and unlock it. Basically, unlock locking it allows you. To, so, no matter what you do, so say I was to rub out this layer along this hair. Sorry, I've not explained these icons here. Now, along these icons here, this is your eraser icon. This is your pencil, and that's your uh, fill icon. Now, if you was gonna, if you're gonna rub out a, a layer, so just again imagine your glass plane. You can do so. And you won't affect anything below the next layer. Now, if I want to affect this layer here, all I need to do is unlock it. Yeah, I can also hide that layer by clicking on there, click on there, and it's back on. Okay, so that's your layers sorted out. Now, okay, even though I've used these icons here, I'm going to just go through them basically. So this is obviously your draw. Now, up here, you've got your radius, which is... Um, very simple you can just scale it up or scale it down and again with your draw scale it up scale it down because we're just doing a, a sketching type tool I'm not going to go in really deep into it this is part one of the tutorial I'm going to do a part two where I'm going to go through the some of the features in a bit more depth okay so again with your eraser you can scale it up scale it down now, this is your, your this is a new feature they've just put in. It's a, it's a cut item. Um, it's your knife tool. I'm not going to go into that at the moment, but let's go on ones that they've, they've, they've actually created icons for. This is your straight tool. So if you want to draw a tool, 
you can just draw like so hit return after you draw it yeah hit return the other thing that um, you can do is say you draw something here and you want to add more another line to it by click press the E key and then you can draw more lines yeah hit return after you finish and then you can move on to the next line so let's rub this out so you've got the curve tool again these these are these are like your anchor points you can change them and move it around so these two tools are, are what you would use um, predominantly for inking if you've created a sketched out an object and you wanted to ink it afterwards you would then use these tools um, you probably won't use them for drawing as much it's more for the inking again with this by clicking E you can then draw and add more objects yeah and also you can modify them with the anchor points yeah this is a, another cool tool here. This one here, I like this one. You can draw, and then you can move your anchor points again here. And like I said before, with this one, you can again add a, a new point on it and modify it. So it's pretty powerful. I mean, I don't know, I haven't used Illustrator in a very long time, but when I did use Illustrator, it didn't have features like this. And I think this is, um, if Illustrator, I think this is really, really powerful, even if you was just doing illustration work as opposed to doing uh, anything like 3D graphics. I think Blender, Grease Pencil is, is very powerful now. Anyway, let's get rid of this one. And then you've got the, the square. Again, you've got your control points. Da -da -da -da. And then you've got your circle. Yeah, so that gives you uh, just a, a rough idea of what you can do with the grease pencil setup, which leads me on to something else. Now, this is just getting into a bit of theory of uh, 3D graphics. You can turn off if you want. I think if, as a new person, you could get into jump into an, uh, a program like Blender or even Maya or 3ds Max or whatever tool because these that's what these are, are tools um you decide to use and be overwhelmed very very easily and quickly and just give up or you know you your your level of learning is not going to be as proficient as it should be what i believe you need to do as a 3d artist is only learn the things you need to know to you need, only learn the things you need to know to get the project that you decided to do done. What I mean by that, say for example, you just wanted to create, um, I don't know, a text, animated title text spinning around. You, you don't need to know rigging. You don't need to know um, loft, lofting. You don't, know how to, you don't need to know. All you need to know is how to use the texting tool and to uh, basic animation features. So do find two tools out there, and as I say, my I'm going to have two tools that deals with a lot of these things, and just use those. Learn, don't overpower yourself with trying to learn too much. Don't buy a big massive book on Blender and think, okay, I'm going to read this book back to from from the front to the end. You ain't going to learn anything because you're just going to. It's just too much. It's it's too much. Oh, it's, you're going to be overwhelmed. Because it's just too much information. You gotta just take little bite, little bits and little bites, and slowly your your three D um, knowledge base will increase. It's just, it's just a slow game. You don't be thinking you can just. I keep on trying to um, say this because I, I speak to, and every now and again I speak to some people, and they go, "Oh, God, I'll give me some advice." I'm really, really enthusiastic about getting into three D and whatever. And I've got this big book and I, and I say, look, stop right there. Keep it simple, stupid. 
you, I don't mean stupid as in you're a stupid person, but I think that's a good analogy. Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. It's a, it's a good analogy to use for life because then you don't overwhelm yourself. Anyway, this is the um, the first part of the tutorial done. Um, and I'm look out for part two on Grease Pencil where I go through some more of the features. Uh, so I'm out of there. Okay, bye.